getting cold and it's getting dark. And it's getting a bit tricky to keep going up here while I'm running on the bus batteries. There's been a lot of electrical stuff arrive. There's lots of power cables, lots of power converters, crimp connectors, the crimper, and the things that are going to make it all possible are in these. This is 16 cells of 280 amp hours of lithium iron phosphate. So I think we should start with an obligatory voltage test. Apparently these are all 3.29, 3.29, 3.29, 3.29, just like the sticker says. These obviously come from China. They arrived and were dropped in the rain. 3.29. What I've got designed for the pack in Fusion 360, just to hold the batteries together, give them a nice frame, um, and then two packs will be built. This is one pack's worth, this is only 16 cells. In total we'll have 32 cells making two battery packs running in parallel, just to give us a bit of redundancy so all of these will be made into one pack and then there'll be a BMS for each of these an isolator a fuse and then this so this is all rated or this connector is rated to 350 amps obviously this uh, cable will do a hell of a lot more uh, we've got 70 mil cross section for this stuff and a fuse that will blow at 400 so pushing the connector a little bit but I think it's going to be plenty safe enough. This is what uh, I've come up with to hold the batteries in, one pack. And then two of these will go in the cargo hold down below. This uh, obviously needs some insulation in it, but this is going to be what I'm going to put them in for now, just to equalize them all together. So let's put these in there. <laughs> this is the first time that these batteries would have gone in here. Although I've built up the frame. And I'm pretty pretty sure I measured it properly, but there's always that moment. I should have some space to add some insulation in either side of the cells and in between the cells all the way along. This is just temporary. The only test that I've done on these so far is just to check that they haven't been damaged in shipping. So they all look like they're, as the seller stated, brand new. QR codes intact. They all seem fine. Because the devil is in the detail. Excellent. That looks pretty good. Yeah, I know. Aluminium battery terminals. Bad juju. This will be fine for what I'm doing. Watch as it causes explosions now. Oh, you idiot. Already 
be stopped the wrong way. Oh God, what's wrong with me? I can feel cringing through the screen now. I know it's very close, but trust me, I'm, uh, I'm not about to do something stupid. Now I've said it, I'm guaranteed to do something stupid. Yeah, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Okay. Hands up who's still watching. Just to see if I cause a massive explosion. In this case, everything I've seen about lithium iron batteries, explosion is not one of the worries. Pretty sure it'll be okay. I mean, I watched a couple of YouTube videos, right? So everything's fine. And the reason I'm doing this now is just to balance not balance, equalize all of the cells together. I'm not going to be building up the pack as it's going to be and wiring everything up and fitting a BMS at this point. This is for another day. Right now, all I want to do is make sure that those voltages stay exactly where they say they are. And any difference between the cells is going to be equalized out across the whole pack over the next few days or so. Um, the, the reason that I'm not trusting the voltage reading is that lithium iron phosphate batteries have a very flat discharge and charge voltage curve. Although your cell might say 3.295, 2.96, 2 2.97, because the discharge curve is so flat you could actually be at quite a significant state of charge difference across the whole thing. Um, thing. Thing. Wrong thing. Wow, that would be a very bad day if someone was to uh, drop something metal on it. Well, I didn't actually build or design these to fit on the battery in this way, but this fits nicely hunt yeah absolutely does not fit okay good okay forget about that we'll have a look at that another day this is not going to be the final configuration and there's obviously a lot of safety concerns <laughs> yeah it's fine what are you complaining about we got like a centimeter there What? It's totally insulated. A couple of days later. Let's see. 3.296, which is pretty much 1.56. Pretty much where they seem to be when they were tested individually. Let's get this apart. Oh. 
I hope I don't have to move those around too much. That's heavy. This is going through a apparently 400 amp breaker or isolator. This is uh, another piece that I 3D modeled and um, printed. It's in PETG along with all of these battery covers. This block just holds the fuse and the main positive and then this goes onto the main positive of the battery which fits just about there. Main positive. Cool. Here, positive here, 52.7 divided by 16, 3.293 and that also will be a sheet of perspex that sits on top. 52.7 bang on okay good nothing blew up sweet 52.7 volts nice yeah gotta get some crimping done this which you'll be using for the time being this is a 5000 watt Icona Conversol MPP clone a little bit of tidying up left to do I did manage to I, I, it's getting quite dark in here now so I don't know if you can actually see this but I did manage to get those plates that I 3d printed into here but that mounts the BMS nice and tidy on top of that. That's not going anywhere. Nice length for all the cables, and then I built into the bracket a little bit of a mount for the main negative pole. Then connected up to the main Anderson connector. It goes into the bus bar here. And we've got. 50.2 volts. I've had the inverter running for a while just to uh, check that that's all working. Kind of jerry-rigged a few uh, <laughs> ground to this one and then it's going through the uh, 125 amp single pole breaker which I'm going to replace for a double pole breaker so that can be completely isolated. Got my 3D printed terminal covers on so no danger of shorting anything now. And so far, the BMS is showing yeah, 23 millivolt deviation between each of the cells, but so far they haven't had a charge yet. So I'm just running them down a little bit, mainly because I'm not able to get the inverter and the charger working with my generator. Tidy up a bit now. 